So a couple days ago, I had a friend approach me, told me that uh, his computer was shot due to uh, an electrical storm, and that they took the computer to Geek Squad, and that they uh, couldn't figure out um, what was wrong with it. I mean, they knew that it was blown, but they couldn't get the data off the drive. Uh, they attempted to slave the drive to uh, another computer, and uh, it wouldn't turn on. And so they said at this point, they could submit it for like a $700 minimum recovery fee in which they would attempt to recover the data off of it. Um, he just said, no, it's, it's not worth it. I don't have that much important information off it. But I thought, uh, you know, I'd take a shot at it. I have no idea what's wrong with this, but take a shot at it, see if we can figure out what's wrong and see if we can fix it. Now, the one benefit that I have that uh, Geek Squad probably doesn't have, uh, amongst other things, is I have an exact replica, well, not a replica, but I have the exact same model number uh, hard drive. So potentially we could replace parts from this uh, to this drive and see if we can uh, recover the data. So let's give it a whirl. So this is the hard drive right here and that's uh, model ST340016A and as stated here it's a standard 40 gig hard drive so yeah this computer is quite a bit older and uh, you know Seagate uh, Barracuda, these are excellent hard drives um, as far as longevity, uh, reliability, so you know they build their stuff with good quality. Um, certainly they're not protected from electrical surges, that's what the power supply is there to uh, help prevent or if they have a, a UPS or a, you know maybe a power strip, probably not. But anyway this wasn't protected also. Um, possible damages to this could very well be the system board that lies underneath this uh, shielded plate. Um, the motor that turns the uh, platters at around 7200 RPM, that motor could be damaged. Uh, both things could be damaged. The controller for the actuator head that basically uh, reads the data off of it, uh, that could be damaged. So, you know, it's potentially a complete loss. Um, uh, technically, uh, he, like I said, if you would have submitted this to a company that would have um, specialized in recovering data, uh, they would have disassembled this uh, uh, in a clean room uh, and uh, you know they're wearing gloves, masks like you see the, uh, on the Intel commercials and they would basically have taken the platters out and then used their own specialized software and uh, mechanical tools to recover data from the platters. So yeah, that's the correct one, Torque T7 for this particular model and we'll just take this shielding off here. We'll set these screws aside. Uh -huh. Oh, looks like I may have to actually increase it to T8 for this one. Maybe fits a bit better. Yeah, there it is. There it is. So we'll unscrew this right here. And this is um, presumably just a shield, um, maybe to prevent uh, interference. This is a you know holder hard drive, so it's probably more susceptible to it, um, and probably so you don't uh, damage the circuit board underneath. And underneath, oh, wow. Well, Look at that right there. Boy, if that's not the best news that I've seen today. Look at that. We've got two complete burn marks uh, right into this uh, protective foam here. Um, so you can bet we're, we should be able to see this on the circuit board uh, without having to search much. This is good news, like I said, because hopefully we can replace the circuit board if that's the only thing damaged, since we have uh, a model just like it, the exact model, and um, get that information off. But take a look at that. Boy, that must have, you know, really taken that chip out. And yeah, yeah, as, as you would expect, let's see here. As you would expect, take a look. You can see pretty plain, you can see pretty plain that we have damage to uh, this, this chip right here, this controller chip here, as well as, let's see here, there was another one, ah, right here, uh, quite a bit of a burn mark. Uh, to here too, and I believe this is the uh, probably uh, maybe the stepping motor controller uh, that is uh, sending the electricity to uh, this motor. So hopefully the uh, motor uh, is not damaged. I don't know if um, current or voltage uh, was too great and the protection on this uh, ceased or froze up. It could potentially have completely ruined this motor. In that case, probably not much uh, we can do here. Yeah, there we go. And that chip is, boy, I can't even read the model number on that. They really, really taken that off. So we can see there quite a bit of damage 
quite an extensive bit of damage was done to this uh, to this processor right here and you can see some of the pins have actually charred off and the other part which I suspect is maybe the controller uh, for the motor you can see that the chip has actually uh, bubbled up Let's see if I can show that bubbled up and then some of the uh, smaller SMD capacitors have uh, completely brown so yeah this is this is definitely damaged um, you know this is a voltage regulator. This could easily as well be damaged. You know, this can handle considerably uh, higher amounts of current. So maybe this is okay. I'm not sure. But luckily, I don't have to attempt to replace uh, this chip and the controller here. Um, I can just straight away replace the whole board here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this uh, take the controller board off here. Now, in this particular case, when I attempted to power it up, uh, the actual uh, power brick has a light on it that that shows when when it's powered up it's just an external power supply that I have just for these standard hard drives that fit the standard Molex connection and as soon as I did that that light started bl uh, flashing on off on off which indicates that um, there's a short in it so luckily that it had that uh, had some protection saying hey when I plug into here there's a short here and I'm not gonna uh, continue sending current through so um, unfortunately I couldn't even get it to spin up it wasn't making the you know the standard click 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 click, um, so that's why I suspect that um, you know this could very well be the uh, the issue here. So uh, let's take a look and see if we see any damage on the underside. Uh, I don't see any particular damage here uh, that would indicate. Um, any issues at all. Uh, this, These pads here are exposed because it connects to the actuator controller, uh, which I'll, sh I'll show you where those pads are on the drive. So this communicates, this is the read and write uh, portion of the drive. This is where all your information uh, gets sent to. And these uh, three pads here uh, go to the uh, stepping motor. I believe it's a stepping motor uh, in the hard drive. This is what uh, spins at 7200 RPM. The motor is the uh, is the drive behind that so and if you take a look at the proximity uh, up here is where one of the chips was burnt here's the controller and just below that or, or right around here is is the chip that's burnt off so we can see uh, that there is maybe potentially some risk in which the current could have traveled from here straight to the pads especially if you know this controller is um, is controlling the uh, maybe part of the voltage and we can see that there's some pinouts going straight to that so hopefully that's not damaged. Uh, if we take a look at the drive here uh, we see this is the pads that we pointed out uh, that I pointed out um, yeah there's no damage to this I wouldn't expect to see too much um, you know these are high current pins they can handle quite a bit and so you know if there was damage to this uh, surely we would have seen it on the other side as well and here is the motor uh, the motor pads that control the uh, or that basically spin at 7200 rpm some hard drives are 5400 rpm but I believe this model being a Barracuda is probably 7200 uh, revolutions per minute that it's spinning uh, for some of us who maybe don't understand how fast that would be if you're in your vehicle and um, you rev up your engine quickly and you see on your uh, dashboard the RPM go up to 2 or 3 well this one goes to 7500 so you'd have to basically floor your vehicle maybe in first or second gear uh, to really uh, see that uh, 7200 RPM and see how fast these platters are really spinning at. So this is the uh, board that I took from the hard drive that's the exact same model and as we can now observe the uh, the chip there isn't damaged because we're going to replace it and if anyone's interested the numbers on this are 280B uh, SH6950D and 28DJ RLTA so this was one of the chips that had been damaged and the other chip that I suspect might uh, have to do with uh, uh, motor speed that chip number is 2P102 and then uh, 2237. So these two chips were the one that were damaged and everything um, else I think was all right. And if we look on the underside of this, uh, this is again, this is the replacement, you know, no, no visible damage that I can see. So let's go ahead and play, replace this in this hard drive and see if um, we can get it to work.
All right, now let's see if we notice. I hear something. Ah, oh, beauty, look at that. Local disc, looks like there's a, ah, oh, there it is. Oh, look at those partitions coming through. Perfect, perfect. So, uh, restore his local disc right here, uh, a data partition and a swap that's uh, 86 out of a uh, one gig, interesting. But there it is. So I'll be able now to, you know, take the data off, put it uh, on a different hard drive because that's what you'd want to do. There's no telling if that motor uh, that's spinning the platters or if the read and write heads are damaged or, um, you know, in, in any shock like that, you can't take the risk and just replace it and then go on. You'd want to, of course, uh, get a brand new hard drive, but get your data off uh, as soon as possible. So that's excellent. We're able to replace that. So. Yeah, so a couple things to keep in mind. Before you attempt a repair like this, verify whether or how important this information is to you. If this is a business or if you have financial data on here and you must get it recovered, put it in professional hands where they can uh, take this thing apart, take the platters out specifically. It certainly costs a great deal more, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars generally, uh, maybe a little bit cheaper nowadays, but you want to make sure that your data is uh, protected and not damaged so this is a repair that I do as a last resort because you know the user didn't have um, any way to get their data back and it wasn't important enough to uh, uh, give away all that money just to uh, back up the data so that's one thing to keep in mind the um, other thing is this repair isn't going to work um, in every single situation Sometimes the actuator motor, sometimes the spindle uh, are damaged, especially if it was dropped. So, you know, physical damage internally to, the, to this drive uh, isn't going to be uh, repaired by simply replacing the main board. And another thing to keep in mind is I ended up uh, being lucky, fortunate enough, to have the exact same system board uh, to replace on this uh, drive. Once you uh, get your data backed up, dispose of this properly. I would not uh, bet that this is going to continue to work. Yes, the main board was replaced. Uh, fortunately, we we're able to get the data off, but there's no evidence that suggests that the um, devices inside, such as the motor, the read and write head, the actuators, aren't damaged at all.